Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you Glenda Elizabeth Gray with a request that you confer on her the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. The decision by Council and Senate to award her this degree has been taken on grounds of the following considerations. Rightly named one of the world's 100 most influential people by Time magazine, Professor Glenda Elizabeth Gray has established herself as a pioneering medical researcher dedicated to improving the lives of those living with chronic diseases, most notably HIV and AIDS. As Chief Executive and President of the South African Medical Research Council, this qualified pediatrician has guided the organization to achieve three consecutive clean audits, ensured more adequate research funding for the historically under-resourced universities, and paved the way for the country's next generation of black medical scientists to flourish. In her capacity as chair of the Global Alliance for Chronic Diseases, she has led research collaborations worldwide. Particularly, her unwavering pursuit of an AIDS-free generation has captured the imagination of the world and given hope to millions. Having co-founded the Witz Perinatal HIV Research Unit at Chris Arne Baragwanath Hospital in 1996, Gray's groundbreaking advances in preventing the mother-to-child transmission of HIV have saved thousands of lives. Since the mid-2000s, this A-rated researcher of the South African National Research Foundation has devoted her attention to the search for an HIV vaccine. As the co-principal investigator of the International HIV Vaccine Trials Network, which is funded by the United States National Institutes of Health, she provides global leadership in exploring candidate HIV vaccines. With South Africa the hardest hit globally by this pandemic, Gray spearheaded the clinical development of HIV vaccines for her home country and conducted the first trial using these drugs, the SAAVI DNA MVA candidate vaccines in South Africa and the United States. In November 2016, HVTN announced an ambitious program for the evaluation of HIV vaccine regimen in South Africa. If successful, it could deliver the first HIV vaccine to be licensed globally. Reassuringly, in charge of this trial is Professor Gray along with her team. Dames en heren, Professor Elizabeth Glenda Gray, so vastberadenheid om diegene met MIV beter leven te gee, is al plaaslik sowel as buitenlands erken. Zij was een medeontvanger van de Nelson Mandela Gezondheid en Mensenrechtenprijs en het ook een van Zuid-Afrika's hoogste eerbewijzen die orde van Papangupwe ontvang ter erkenning van haar werk om MIV oordrag van moeder naar kind te stuit. Internationaal is zij met een Heroes in Medicine prijs van IAPAC die wereldvereniging van medici op vluchtgebied vereer. Die Universiteit van Stellenbosch is trots daarop om professor Glenda Gray met de ere doktersgraad te vereer. Als een vrouw blink zij uit in een oorwegend mannelijke gebied. Aan die hoof van die Afrikaanse medische navorsingsraad wijst zij haar staal als een bestieder van formaat. Als Afrikaan bestrijdt zij een van die grootste pandemies op ons vasteland. En als een wetenschappelijke vergestalt zij sociale impact die die samenleving met haar kundigheid te dien. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa on Glenda Elizabeth Gray for accomplished guidance leading, South African Medical Re leading the South African Medical Research Council, her pioneering research to improve the lives of those with chronic diseases, her revolutionary work in search of a solution to HIV and AIDS, and her social impact, harnessing the science to serve society. I herewith request you to confer the degree on Glenda Gray. Well done. I hereby confer on you, Glenda Elizabeth Gray, the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Well done. Esteemed uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, colleagues, friends, uh, good afternoon. Um, I would like to, to start with a question. 
Uh, what do the following people have in common? Judge Richard Goldstone, Kheri Kutsia, Conrad Jantis, <laughs> Glenda Gray. <laughs> okay, you got it right, right. So I think three things. They're famous. <laughs> Uh, they are fearless firefighters, uh, firefighters, fearless fighters, sorry, and they, maybe fires as well as on my mind. Um, and they're from Boxburg, interestingly, yeah. So there's got to be something special in the water supply in that little mining town. It's my honor to uh, propose a toast uh, to one of these four, Professor Gray. Um, and, and I'd like to begin by saying that growing up as she did, in a working class community and being the second youngest of six children, uh, she learned two things early in life, at least two things, which stood her in good stead for leadership later. Number one is how to stand your ground and fight for what you want. And the second is how to be a good catalyst. And by that I am referring to the scientific definition of catalyst which is as follows, a substance that promotes a reaction but is smart enough not to be consumed in the process. <laughs> she has, however, fought uh, only good causes, uh, many good causes which we don't have time to go into now, and she's used weapons of peace. And I think that is an outstanding feature of Glenda. She's been variously referred to by different people as an anti-apartheid activist, a human rights champion, and as an H HIV warrior, I think, in the last Time magazine article. And for these things, she has uh, obviously deservedly received a string of, of accolades, including the honorary doctorate today. Now, with that sort of profile, one can assume that somebody would be very busy, and so I asked myself as I thought of what to say, what, what does Professor Gray do when she's not working? Uh, and or flying around the world. And uh, for this information, and I have to declare in the, for the sake of transparency my source, uh, my source was the Boxburg Advertiser, <laughs> which is a prestigious high impact community newspaper in Boxburg. <laughs> um, and there are a couple of things I mentioned in that article. Number one, she loves to do pillow fighting <laughs> with her 13 year old son. Um, and, and she added, he, he, he's getting a bit too old for that, which I read as code as he's winning the fights more now. Uh, she loves swimming and walking, and she loves cook-offs and, and uh, bake-offs over the weekends. And even, you'd like this, she likes music by Bobby Dylan, uh, Van Morrison, Leonard Cohen, uh, and Amy Winehouse. So that's what she does when she, she's not busy being a scientist. So it uh, stands to reason that somebody uh, like Glenda, who comes from this uh, uh, you know, uh, town where gold is mined, that she would have a Midas touch. Um, and uh, so I asked myself another question. So what is it that Glenda does not have? What, what, does, what is she bad at? And I found one thing uh, which I'd like to mention. She's got a very low Kardashian index. <laughs> Now this is not to be confused with the H index or the Hirsch index, which reflects you know, the extent to which your scientific work is, is cited by other scholars. The Kardashian index, the formula for the Kardashian index, is the number of followers on Twitter divided by the number of times your work has been cited in peer-reviewed journals. <laughs> So, unlike Donald Trump, uh, uh, she, she has virtually no Twitter presence, and I think that's a shame. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at somebody who is a very special South African, very special person, and somebody who I think epitomizes what uh, Nelson Mandela said when he referred to, uh, when, he, when, he, when he indicated that a good head and a good heart is a formidable uh, combination, and that's what you have, Glenda. We honor you, and I ask everyone to rise as we drink this toast. I did take note of the word brief. 
And, um, and as a scientist, um, I studied the method section of the, of, the, of, of the communication, and the method section said, um, you can talk for three minutes, and, you know, and don't, don't go over the three minutes. So, you know, she gave me that hint about that. Um, Jimmy, you forgot about Glenda Kemp. Uh, she also <laughs> was from Bucks. Right? Uh, and so... I had her as Chancellor in South Africa in Stellenbosch. So, she was my childhood hero, Glenda Kemp. So, so, so I'm glad that we, we have, we, we're in good company. So, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Jimmy, the Dean of uh, Medicine, distinguished guests and family and friends, um, thank you for this award. Um, I'm truly honoured to receive it, and it's an even greater honour to be placed um, in such distinguished ranks as both past and present people who've got honorary doctorates. As, um, as a scientist, I need to emphasise that I would not be here today accepting this award if I was not part of a team. And science is about being a part of a team. I'm lucky that I get to be the boss of the team and can tell everybody what to do. And sometimes that's really nice. Um, they all have to listen to you. Um, but you have to be part of a team to, to do science. And I have to acknowledge um, the team, which are scientists, clinicians, our study participants, people that, that um, agree to come into our trials and uh, for the love of science and for trying to find a, a vaccine or an intervention, they put their hands up for science and um, they contribute to science um, and feel uh, really great about that. And also the communities and within which we work because um, if the communities don't trust us, we can't do our work. So I want to thank them and acknowledge them for participating in these long marches um, that we have in, in HIV trials for HIV vaccines. So it's been a long march and hopefully we will make progress in the, next couple of, in the next couple of years. So we are in a golden period when it comes to HIV vaccine science. And we're also in a golden period in South Africa at the moment. Um, I've never ever seen such transparency, such leaks. Um, I wake up every morning to see what Brian Mulefi is getting up to um, at the parliamentary committee or not being there, and the late submissions by um, people that are suspended. So we're living in fascinating times, and it's actually a golden age because um, civil society is working in ways that they never worked before. And so I, I just love waking up and listening to the, seeing what's coming up. And that's why I'm not a Twitter fan. I also was told that uh, when you work in government, you know, like Donald Trump, you know, you should not Twitter, you know, be careful. So, um, you know, I've taken the, the cue that uh, to Twitter in government is a, you know, can only get you into trouble. So I take this award on behalf of the team and I also would like to thank my long-suffering family. So for my kids, my children for their patience and diligence, and for my sisters and brothers, you know, or the other five of them, you know, for, um, you know, for walking alongside me during this journey, and, um, and um, my, my brother-in-laws and, sister and sister-in-laws who, who have um, painstakingly watched me um, do many things and get into lots of trouble sometimes, uh, but always been at my side. So, um, so I would really like to, to thank everybody about this. So when I, I was very conscious about the three minutes, and so I wanted my kids, to, I wanted to, my, my kids aren't here, so I said like, I want you to time me to make sure that I, I'm on three minutes, because you know, I'm a scientist, I keep to the rules. And um, I ended with, I had this quote which I ended with, and it was by Nehru, who is the, um, was the first Prime Minister of India. And when I, when I said this, when I told them about this quote, they got very cross because um, they said that as a, you know, I'm talking like a scientist and I'm going to offend everybody in the room uh, because how can I think science can do everything for mankind? So they did, we had a, about a 40 minute discussion about the value of science in society because they are anthropologists and they work in the humanities and so I dare not tell them about science. So anyway, so I'm going to continue to do the, uh, the quote from Nehru. And he says, um, in one of his most famous quotes, it is science alone that can solve the problems of hunger and poverty, of insanitation and illiteracy, of superstition and deadening custom and tradition, of vast resources running to waste, or a rich country inhabited by a starving people. Who indeed can ignore the science, of t the science today? And he says, at every turn, we have to seek its aid. At every turn of life, we have to seek science aid. 
Um, and that he also goes on, which my children really objected to, uh, the, this claim is that the future belongs to science and those who make friends with science. <laughs> <laughs>